Today's my review of my new e-tron. Yeah, I've had it for a year and a half. I've got 48,538 kilometers on the car. Spent literally two months going across the country all the way to Newfoundland and all the way back. And the car was flawless. I had four co-pilot for about a third of the trip. I'm a big fan of uh, electric cars and a big part of it was uh, this uh, documentary that I, I saw about five years ago um, called Revenge of the Electric Car. It was about four different um, entrepreneurs of which one was Elon Musk and talking about his Tesla. And I did some research after the documentary. I was really blown away. I went online right afterwards. I got a more, lot more information on the Tesla. And I talked to Marianne, my wife. I said, want to get a Tesla eventually. We plan to get the Model 3, which was a more affordable version. The Model S, which was their premium car. Stood in line when it was released. We were going to take the car, once we got it, to Newfoundland. Unfortunately, she passed away a few years later, just when the Model 3s were being delivered. I needed a car for my business. The Model X was the other option, except I didn't really like the design of the gullwing doors. You couldn't put a roof rack on top of the car and quite often I'll have something to put on the top of the roof like bicycles, ski box or a surfboard. I just felt more comfortable using a more of a conventional car, just regular doors. Because Marianne was an Audi owner, she was getting the newsletters from Audi into her inbox talking about their new car called the e-tron. I was impressed with what Audi was planning on doing. When the time came to make a reservation, which was refundable, I put down a thousand dollars, the minimum required. Three days later, I got an email from Audi Canada saying we would like to invite you to San Francisco for the global launch of the new e-tron and all expenses paid not only had um, the displays but they had the actual designers and some of the top executives doing small meeting room presentations I got to meet also the executives like the president of Audi Canada the product manager the marketing managers I decided to go forward and get the Audi I got the car July 25th and a week later I went on my trip I've never been happier with an automobile in my life. Not only because it's a very luxurious car and, and very comfortable, but the, um, just the way it drives. I mean, it's just amazing. The, it has instant, instant power. It's so quiet. It's just a pleasure to drive. This particular car is equipped with what they call the technique level, and it comes with special windshield, which actually is a sound deadening. The heads-up display allows you to see the speed limit of the road, the speed that you're going, the turn-by-turn -turn directions. The other option that you have is the lane assist. Just to the right, you'll see a little kind of a green car, the dotted lines. If you stay in the center, it'll uh, have both green lines going. If I move to the right without my turn signal on, the car will automatically bring the car back to the center of the lane. It also vibrates the wheel. The turn by turn is going to now show the direction where I need to go and it actually has a little map that's showing. See, there's a graph on the right starting to go smaller and smaller and smaller and that means it wants me to turn left right at where the, gr the graph turns almost to no dots at all which is right about here and it knows now that I need to make a left. So there's three main screens. The first screen is your dashboard in front of the driver. This is an important dial. We talks about how much battery power you're using. This white line can go down to where it shows charging. So if you're slowing down or using the brake or regenerated braking, it'll actually charge the battery. You have a long-term memory which shows how many kilowatt hours you're using, your average speed, and how far you've gone in your long-term memory. You also have a short-term memory. It automatically resets if you stop the car, but you can also have different views. So you can do it by putting the view of your navigation there. You can adjust the size of the map just by a thumb wheel. You can put it for your telephone. You have your, your different stations. This view where you can make it bigger or smaller and on for each one. So you can go like this, like that. Then there's the all the information that you would need for controlling the car itself. And then everything below is for climate control. Plus we have a cheat sheet where I have all my different music channels. If I want to increase the temperature of the car, you just go like this or you can go like this. The actual height of the car can be raised or lowered. 
you have like nine different comforts, find different settings. So there's off-road. So if I actually click it on off-road, you can actually feel the car raise. All road is a good average height for pretty much all roads. And it also automatically adjusts. If you're driving in the city, it goes up a little bit, but if you're on highway speeds, it will lower automatically to give you better efficiency. You also have an efficiency mode. There's the auto one, there's dynamic. So dynamic is puts you in a range where you have the, a maximum performance. So you can actually create your own individual settings. You can also do the same thing for steering. One of the easiest things about the car is, is your navigation. Put down where I'm going, I, if I, I can actually just write here, um, Whistler, right, you know, right on the screen. Okay, so I hit Whistler. There's a control on the steering wheel where I just speak into it. And I'll just say, okay, take me to Whistler, BC. Searching for destinations. One moment, please. You can now choose a line number or provide additional search terms. Line one. Should I start route guidance to Whistler now? Yes. Starting route guidance. Please drive to the route shown. Because it's an electric car, you know, these blue lines tells you how far you can, is your range of your car. And that's based on how much of your battery that you have left over. So in this particular case, I have 173 kilometers on my battery. I can easily make it to Whistler without having to, to recharge. A multitude of information at the touch of your finger. The charging is important and it tells you what your battery level is at and you can actually um, select the um, where you want the battery to stop charging so you just hit target and you can go to 100 percent or you can you can go as as low as 50 percent and everything in between most of the time for regular day uh, use 80 percent is really good if you're going to go on a long distance you can put it to um, 100 percent the audi presense is one of the safety features if a child was running across your path of your car the car will automatically brake you can adjust the distance warning for that there's all different types of controls the adaptive cruise assist your side assist so that your hold assist when you're on a steep hill and you want the car to hold on its own one of the things that i used on my trip across the continent was the adaptive cruise control. Really made my drive more comfortable, more relaxing, allows for specific distance to the car in front of you. So if you're going faster than the car in front, it, the car will slow down to keep the same speed. If the car in front goes faster, my car will go faster to the selected speed that I have. If you came to a, a tight corner, the car can sense the tight corner and slow down automatically and then speed up the same way a good driver would speed through the corner and you can actually adjust the sensitivity to the corners you can do it so that it doesn't adjust at all adjust a little bit or adjust a lot i wanted to maximize my range i would go behind a big transport truck draft them but i would draft them at, at a safe distance and the cruise control would put me at a safe distance it actually did increase my range auto dimming of the uh, high beams so when you're driving at night um, you don't have to uh, manually turn off your high beams when a car approaches uh, it does it automatically for you and then when when the car has gone by it'll it'll come back on the battery itself is 95 kilowatts but the engineers have limited the actual effective battery usage is only 83.6 kilowatts about 5.7 kilowatts at the bottom end you cannot use and 5.7 kilowatts at the top end you cannot use this really allows for the battery to last a lot longer i've uh, had the car now for uh, a year and a half and I've never been happier with any car I've ever owned. First of all, being electric, it's like a whole new game. Um, you know, it's just, just a pleasure to drive. Um, you know, using, uh, on my trip that I did in the summer of 2019, I used the adaptive cruise control and you, uh, you're able to really have a relaxing drive. It, it's really when you finish your, your, your day's drive, it's just been really comfortable. You don't feel really tired or stiff afterwards. The, you know, the car is really comfortable. 
Um, you know, the, the car drives beautifully in the snow. So, you know, when I, you know, the following winter, you know, I'm going through all sorts of, you know, incredible snowstorms, uh, low temperatures, and the car still performed beautifully. Yes, the range was not as good because uh, the battery, when it's very cold, does not give you the same range. But the fact that, you know, with the you knowing where all the charging stations are um, through either the car's um, navigation or plug share, I'm able to still charge, you know, with no difficulty. And as I've had the car in longer now, when I first started, compared to when I first started, um, you know, the infrastructure of where the chargers are, you know, was, um, you know, few and far between. Uh, especially in northern BC. But now, you know, Petro Canada has been implementing uh, high speed chargers all across the country. Uh, BC Hydro has added way more um, chargers. So, for example, from Prince Rupert to, um, uh, to Jasper, I mean, it was a real struggle to, to get across, um, you know, it was only level two chargers. Uh, now there's uh, high-speed chargers along the entire route and also going from Vancouver to Prince George now you there was like uh, just a, like two or three high-speed chargers now there's like five or six so there is really um, as you're I, I'm finding is that there's more electric cars there's more chargers um, and um, you know charging your vehicle on a long trip it's, it's not a problem at all and of course when I'm at home now um, and uh, you just plug your car in at home it's just really simple um, it takes less time less money um, to charge than going to a gas station um, I did have um, you know basically trouble free driving the car's been really flawless but there has been a few incidences which I should tell you about. Um, the first uh, part of my trip, I was uh, using the electric vehicle char charging cable, and uh, it was pouring rain, and uh, uh, the, the cable was uh, in like in a big puddle. And um, when I used it the f uh, a few days later in uh, Medicine Hat, you know, it, it just didn't work. Um, so that cable had to be replaced, and Audi was able to replace it uh, within a few days. Uh, they had one ready for me when I got to Winnipeg. Um, the other thing that's happened, um, I did have uh, an issue with running out of windshield washer fluid. Uh, every week it would be like uh, empty and that didn't make any sense to me because I wasn't even using the windshield washer fluid. So what happened there was uh, we found out that there's uh, sensors that the windshield washer needs to be used for to clean them. Um, and uh, the sensor was faulty, so it was continually cleaning the, uh, the sensors and <clears throat> ran out of windshield washer fluid. So once the sensor was fixed, never had that problem again. Uh, another issue was um, one of my taillights uh, burnt out, so they had to replace that. And then another issue was um, there was a leak, um, you know, coming on my headliner. Um, water was coming from it. I didn't know exactly how that happened. Um, but um, I think there was a leak in the in the sunroof or something, but they fixed that uh, very quickly. And other than that, you know, nothing. I mean, the, the, the car's been great. There's been no issues whatsoever other than what I just mentioned, and those were really very minor issues. Okay, there it is. Um, there was a 20 inch, which became standard, a 21 inch, that was, um, you know, really fancy, and then there was the 19-inch, and I chose the 19-inch. Uh, they came with uh, real summer tires. Uh, the other ones all came with all season, and the reason why I chose the 19-inch is because they had more of an, uh, they were designed to be more aerodynamic, and the the wheels with with a, a very low rolling resistance. Now, what you're looking at here are my winter tires, the ones that uh, came with the car were true summer tires and the rolling resistance I would say was excellent and gave me a good five to ten percent better range compared to somebody using a 20 or 21 inch. The Audi comes with a spare tire. You would think that every car would come with a spare tire but all the Teslas do not. 
they, they do not come with a spare tire. So you can see there it is right there. Here you have an extra storage spot right there. There's a lot of room in the trunk and if you need more room all you do is you hit this lever and it automatically pops down. I just wanted to show you the um, extra support storage that you have right here. The, um, the, the, what you need for the spare tire. This is the compressor to add air to the tire and your jack. It shows you where the car is. That's really cool. One of the great things about electric cars, including the Audi, is that you use uh, regenerative braking, which, which is really not using the brakes, but it's using kind of a generating power back into the battery. We have paddle shifters on the wheel. So you have one on the left side and one on the right side. If I let the, my foot off the accelerator pedal and I hit the first pedal, it'll start to slow down the car. And if I hit it again, it slows down even more. I can also release it on the other side. A lot of auto journalists, they like the idea of the one pedal drive. In other words, you don't have to touch the pedals. I'm gonna let my foot off the accelerator and automatically it slows down. That's what I mean by one pedal drive. I actually preferred to control the regenerated braking myself manually. When I come home, I just open up my little uh, charging port right here. This is the, uh, the charging cable that came with the car. The Audi app. So stationary climate control right here. It's gonna go on automatically for 30 minutes. It'll warm the heat up in the car to whatever temperature it's already done. It gives me all sorts of driving data. It tells you all, the, all your different stats for how efficient the car is. You know, short-term memory. So that, this will be like when you do a small trip for charging and it tells you the state of charge right now. And if I was charging the car, it would show that it's charging. I first looked at the Audi, you know, they talked about the range being around 400 kilometers. And as um, the EPA ratings came in, it was quite disappointing. They were saying that the range was only going to be about 324 kilometers. And, and I'm starting to freak out a little bit because if I'm planning my trip across North America from Vancouver to Newfoundland and then back through the States, I'm just worried that I'm going to get stuck. The range of the car is less. Well, then I'll just do better planning. But the thing is, is that the car performed better than what they said. In other words, instead of getting 324 kilometers of range, I was getting usually 350, 360, 370. In one case, I think I got well over 400, like 420 kilometers of range. I created a charging log to show my actual ranges were. And my charging log is on my website. I put the date, the location, the type of charger, whether it's a level two or level three. Level two is an, an AC charger which takes a lot longer to charge compared to a direct current or DC or fast charger called level three. At home, I have a level two. It takes about 10 hours to charge my battery from almost empty to full. Level three charger delivers 50 kilowatts per hour. As the battery gets full, the last 20%, it goes a bit slower. If a 95 kilowatt hour battery, let's say down to 5%, and the charger is a 50 kilowatt per hour charger, that means that my battery should be charged fully in about an hour and a half. I was impressed about with Audi was that they were coming out with what they called super fast chargers. Instead of a 50 kilowatt charger, which is mostly what's being used by, uh, let's say, BC Hydro or ChargePoint, the Electrify Canada and the Electrify America, because they're the same company, they're coming out with 150 kilowatt chargers and even 350 kilowatt chargers. It, they weren't ready when I was going through my trip in the summer of 2019, but they were ready 
on the way back through the United States. So I could get a full charge in half an hour to 45 minutes, like full. On my charge log, put down the battery level before I started to charge, the battery level at the finish of the charge, the time it took to charge in minutes, my odometer readings, the kilometers traveled on that particular charge, and the range I had before and the range that I had afterwards. One of the things that the car does, it estimates what your range would be depending on how you drove before you charged. The computer in the car can be adjusted to kilometers or metric or into Imperial, which would be miles. Of course, in the winter time, using winter tires, my uh, range is lower because there's more aggressive tread. Colder temperatures definitely affect the range. My ranges drop in the winter time to as low as 250 kilometers. What does Audi mean to me? It just means great quality, great build quality, solid ride, fantastic interior, incredibly comfortable seats, all the luxury features that you would expect from Audi. Just overall, it just puts a smile on your face.